Well, it's been a great morning this morning. Uh, you enjoyed the morning session so far? And uh, now we're just going to look at, we, Dan looked at the, the pollution or the corruption of our hearts there. We saw that illustration in the ink going into the pure water. And Sarah spoke of the symptoms of that heart. And now I, I just want everyone in this place here uh, to go through a journey with me. Uh, from the youngest, 12, 13-year-old, to the oldest leader here, male, female, for us to come and listen to the journey of what God does in bringing someone with a corrupted heart back to life. You'll see you've got a piece of paper there in front of you somewhere. Um, I encourage you to grab a pen as well as we go on this journey. I really encourage you to enter into this journey and reflect on your own personal life as we do this together. Can I encourage each one of us to have an open heart? an open and honest heart before God as we do this. You know, Jesus told many stories in the scriptures, often called parables. And one story he shared was about what's called the prodigal son, the son that walked away from his father. And we're going to have a look at that t this morning. And, and as Jesus tells stories, it's actually in those stories that we find ourselves. And so as I share this story and unpack it a little bit, I want to ask you to look to see where you can find yourself and your heart in the midst of this story. I'll start um, there. The story starts off with a father and a son. I think it'll be up there on the screen. Jesus continued, he said. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me a share of the estate. So he divided this property between them. Not long after that, the youngest son got together all he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. Let's just stop there. At the beginning of the picture, and Dan started with it this morning, is God in relationship with us or Adam and Eve in the beginning, in perfect unity. Nothing, no division in that relationship. There's just nothing but intimacy. But in this story, we see something interesting. We have a father and a son, and we see the son walking away from the father. But what the son was doing there in asking from, for the inheritance, he was saying, Father, I actually wish you were dead. I, I don't really need you in my life. Just give me everything that you can that I might go my own way. Quite a simple concept. But I want to put it to you that every single one of us here have made that same decision. God has given us life. He's created us uniquely. He's created, created us specially. He has loved us with the most amazing love. But each one of us, in our own unique way, has said, God, I will take this life. I don't need you. Let me just walk my way. Give me all that, all that you have. Like, oh, I want my life, and I want what you've given me, but let me do with it whatever I please. And let me just walk away. I, I'm not interested in you, God. As his children, we walk away from him. And as I said, I, I put it to us all here that we all have done that. That is the part, that's the corruption of the heart that happened with what Dan shared this morning with Adam and Eve. It was, God, we don't need you. We'll go our own way. And I put it to each one of us. We have to make a decision whether we want to acknowledge that or not. We've all done it. But the decision is whether we acknowledge that or not. Because in this son and in me is a whole lot of I. 
It's a whole lot of, it's all about me, God. It's all about I and what I want to do. And I want to encourage you on your pieces of paper, if that's you, if you can see that in your life, you can see that you've walked away from a God who loves you and you've wanted to take control of your own life, that you just put a big I on your piece of paper there. If you don't have a pen and paper, you just either borrow one from someone or just imagine it there on your paper. But you just acknowledge before God, it's just between you and God, that God, I've walked away from you and it's been all about I. I, I, what I want, my life is mine. You can be distant. As we read on in the story, we see that he, he left the father in verse 14, it says, after he had spent everything squandering in this um, wild living, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went out and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Now, in this part of the story, we see that he's gone his own way. But as we've heard this morning, in his wild living and all that he was doing, he became trapped. There he was, enslaved. He's working in a pig pen. That's all he could do. It was nothing like the life that he anticipated. And in your, your quiet time out there and shush time, you were reflecting on things that maybe are in your life that are either binding you, they're symptoms of your fleshly nature. Um, I just encourage you now to write those things that you acknowledge before God that you have in your life that are binding you. Things in your life that have come as symptoms and fruit of that fleshly nature that are there. And the reality for this son as he walked away was that it left him in a place of longing. And I just put it out there today that maybe some of you are longing. Longing to know what life is really about. Longing to know a life that is about love and freedom. And that maybe you can identify with this son in that pig pen, longing. And I want to say, as you write some of those things, they could be addictions, they could be anything. There's two things I want to say there. Is one is, some of you have found yourself in that place because of deep hurt. For whatever reason, there's been hurt, pain, abuse in your life, and rather than run to God, the most natural thing for us is to run to these other things. That might be other relationships. It might be alcohol. It might be some sort of um, sexuality or, or pornography or whatever. But whatever it is, you're running to something else rather than God to find healing. There's no condemnation. I'm not condemning you. What I'm saying, try, trying to help you understand is that when you come to God, you will find healing. These things are false. They will never fulfill you. They will only entrap you. And some of you might even be hard on yourself. you like, I, I can't stop these things. But I want to tell you, the reason is because you've run to them rather than to God. When you know the fullness of the love of God, you will not run to these things. And maybe today is your day of healing. Today is the day that you run to God rather than to run to other things. And I also want to say that some of you, you might not have gone into wild living. You, you're good. You're a good person. But you're working hard to achieve in life. You're working hard at school. You're working hard to perform. But you are just as empty as the person that has run to the wild living. Because God is still not in the center of your life. And if we go on in our story, we find that the son 
comes to his senses. In verse 7, he says, When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have, fe- have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out, I will go back to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Today is a day when some of you want to say, today I come to my senses. But what I want to share right now is the picture of the father. How does God see you in this place? Well, let me tell you, the father in this picture, while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. He sees you today. Do you know that? He sees exactly where you're at today. He knows your heart better than you do. And what's he do? He saw him far off. He was filled with compassion. God is filled with compassion for you. The father ran to his son. He threw arms around him and he kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said, Quick, servants, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. So they began to celebrate. How does God see you? There he is with open an open invitation actually running towards you with compassion and love, just waiting for you to come back to him. That he might put a robe, a ring on your finger, that he might celebrate and give fullness of life to you. I want to say your father in heaven is waiting for you to come. If you wrote that I on your piece of paper, if you made that decision to walk away from God, He is back there with arms wide open, ready for his grace, his love, his forgiveness to come into your life. And there's a decision to to make. Whether we turn back to God. You know, we start off saying there was a big eye, like it's all about me. But what God calls is for us, for that eye to be bent into a sea. For us to bend before him like a sea in surrender. Like that son saying, God, I'm not worthy. I'm only worthy to be your son. Not even worthy to be a son. And in that position, as we come back to him in surrender, we find forgiveness and grace and love and freedom. And so... Today, if you wrote on your piece of paper, you wrote that big eye. And be very careful before you do this. If today you want to say to God, it is no longer I. I bend the knee to you, God. My life is not my own. My life is yours. And today is a day that you acknowledge before him that you're coming back to him in ultimate surrender. I not only give you my sin, I give you my life, I give you my future, I give you my time, I give you my all, because you're the one that created me, you know life, and I'm longing for your full life, and if that's you, and I said be careful before you do it, I don't want you to do it just because I'm saying it, I want you to do it because it's in your heart, today you feel God is calling you to surrender all of your life. If you do that, I want to encourage you to put a circle around that eye, like our logo, and put a cross in it. Take your time. Don't rush into that. This is a full surrender of your life.
really, I don't want you to do it unless you really feel God's calling you to give all that you are to Him. Because it's a costly thing. You're letting Him be in charge of your life. You're walking away from the I. We're about to sing a few songs now in worship and just in response. And this is for, for teens and leaders, anyone in this building. I want us to respond in two ways. The first is if if you acknowledged today that life has been all about I and today you want to surrender to Him. You want to bend your knee at the cross and say, it's been all about me, but today I surrender. No longer about I. I want to ask you to come. Just come down here. Maybe if you feel comfortable, bend on your knees, just turning that I into a C. Say, this is the moment, God, that I give you my all. And we'll have some M&M leaders, or maybe your coaches, if, if they see you come, will come and pray for you. But again, this, this is not something we do easily. This is, this is if God is calling you and you are ready to give your all to Jesus, then you will come. And then after that, we're going to sing a song. Just continue to worship. And throughout these two or three songs that we'll be singing, you'll have an opportunity. If there are things on your paper things in your life that you want to ask for forgiveness for, you want to leave behind. There's four crosses at the front of the auditorium here that you'll come and just in the meditation of your heart or in a prayer, just bring those and just place them at the cross. Leave them there knowing that you're forgiven. Obviously, there's a lot here. We can't do all that at once. But if you've got that paper and you want to leave it at the cross, as the second part of this response, we can make our way there but first of all I just want to ask those leaders, teens, whoever you are if you feel God speaking to you and saying this is the day my eye turns to a sea, it's no longer about me my whole life God is for you I surrender here I just ask everyone to stand And even before we sing a song, you be courageous. And you just come now. If that's you, just come down. Just kneel. Kneel here. And you're just saying to God, I surrender. I surrender all. your heart, just pour your heart out where you are, either out loud or just in your heart, just speak what you want to speak to God, just speak words of surrender, maybe confess things that you want to ask for forgiveness for, things in your life that you've placed before God, just pour out your heart before Him. anyone else just come I'd like to pray for you God we thank you that you are that God with open arms you're a God who longs for us you run towards us God You love us more than we can imagine, God. 
despite the fact we walk away from you, despite the fact we live for our flesh and live in sin, Lord, you welcome us back, God. You run towards us. You see us with compassion and love as your children. And I want to thank you, God, that as far as the east is from the west, you remove our transgressions, Lord. It's not about our righteousness. It's about the righteousness of Christ. And we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. But today, God, we say sorry. I say sorry, God, for walking away from you. I say sorry, God, for taking the reins of my life, of wanting to rule my life. And Jesus, we place you as the Lord of our lives. We want to listen to you. We want to follow you. We long to know you, Jesus. Help us to place you as the the center of our lives, as the Lord of our lives. We give you our all, God. Everything that we, we have, we want to give to you. And we want to thank you, God, that you always love us. You always have our best in mind. Lord, I want to pray for each one that's made a decision here that God, by your Spirit, you would fill them, Lord God, as they've surrendered, laid down self, Lord God, by your Spirit, the Holy Spirit would work in powerful ways in their life that would be no longer them, but Christ living in them, bringing transformation and life and power and love into their life. Use us, each one of us, Lord God, to to be your servants in your kingdom, that your kingdom might expand to the ends of the earth, we pray. We pray, Father, for just a filling of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord God, that truth will enter minds and hearts, the truth that will set free. So now I just encourage any M&Ms and coaches as we continue to sing here, maybe to pray with those that have responded. But also over the, the, the time of these next two or three songs, if there's things on your paper that you want to leave at the cross in your own time, just come to the cross and you just leave them there. There's four crosses there. We just want to worship. And I want us to know as we worship that God is a God of grace. He forgives us. He just wants us to come to Him, to not hide. Don't hide from God. Don't put masks up. Just come to Jesus. He forgives. His his love transforms. There's grace in Jesus. So let's worship together now.